Welcome to Separate Bathrooms. We would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we record our podcast, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. We pay our respects to elders past and present. Hello, Ali. Hey, Cam Dado. <laughs> Are you here? I'm so here. <laughs> <laughs> We've just come back from the most incredible journey. Mm. Chautauqua. Adventure. <laughs> Chautauqua? Yeah. What's Chautauqua? It's the Native American word for journey. Is it? Mm. I know it's a street name in Los, in Los Angeles, Angeles, but I didn't know yeah. that that's what it I mean, meant. vaguely, that's the definition, but oh, it's a journey. Wow. It's a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, wow, well, I love Which that. Which is what we did. We did. We went to Scotland. We or did. Or we went to the UK, really. Yes, yeah, so but mostly Scotland. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you might have seen, I think, Cam, you posted the most on your Instagram mm. about the places we went and the things we did. And I was saying the other day that I didn't post a lot because I felt mm. so, number one, I didn't want to be on my phone a whole lot, but it was such a special sort of private experience that I kind of wanted to cocoon it all up in my mm in my head and my heart for so long. And it's not that I don't want to share it because I actually do though. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where or how or what to post in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm glad you did. And I know that a lot of people, um, were, 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 were messaging you saying, can you give us the full list of what you did? And you know, how did it go with all the adult kids? So we're here to sort of talk about that yeah, really. Yeah. And it, it, well, short answer is it went well with the adult kids. <laughs> I mean, we did this, um, it, the way it came about, we should go back to that because it was Boxing Day last year, wasn't it? And we, we just spent a hot Christmas mm. and Ali said, I want to have a, a white Christmas next year. Yeah. Can we go to Ireland? And it was like, well, we've been to Ireland. We did that. What about Scotland? <laughs> that was enough <laughs> yep. for you, right? Yep. 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 That, that was Scotland. I've been there. I was there when I was 19, so mm. 18, 19, so such mm. a long time ago. So I am a major lover of everything UK, uh, Cornwall, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, anything Celtic, I'm like all over it. So mm -hmm. I was like, yep, that'll do me. Mm. And the kids were immediately in, as was our son's boyfriend. Mm. Um, and the journey, literally the journey began from there, the research, the booking, the, we, we, the saving the goal setting, mm. more research. <laughs> well, this, and this is mostly Al. She did uh, on the back end. Now I can say, um, after experiencing the whole thing that you organized it as much as you possibly can, you know, I mean, cause you're never sure about what's actually going to happen. You have best laid plans, you know? Um, yeah. but, but we had places to stay every night. Some nights we were like we Airbnb'd most of it. Yeah. Um, some of them were single nights. There was a couple of like Christmas was a five night stay, which I think was such a great idea so that we could just plant ourselves if we wanted to for a day or so in front of a fire or, you know, as it turned out, there was a pile of snow. Yes. And, and it was, it was cold, but we were prepared for that. Yeah. Um, but so Al organized all this sort of stuff, all the flights, the, the train ticket from, London to Edinburgh, um, the rental car that we picked up that was, you know, that we ended up doing just over 2000 Ks in mm -hmm. over the, over the time, uh, what a way to do it. It was just, it was just so brilliant. And here we are, what, three days back and we're both still dreaming, <laughs> still <laughs> yeah. dreaming of Scotland. Every night I'm, I'm dreaming of Scotland and I, and I organized the, um, the driver for the van. Mm. I mean, he was expensive. <laughs> He was. He didn't he eat a lot? Too? He ate so much, but he never complained, and he did a <laughs> bloody good job too. <laughs> yes, there's a couple of hairy moments. Snow, Ooh. snow. Like one one thing that we didn't consider, which we thought about afterwards, was winter daylight hours. Yes, yeah. In the UK, and certainly it got less the further north we went. So, you know, the yeah. sun's coming up at around 8.30 in the morning. I mean, that's when the light hits the sky. The yeah. sun doesn't actually come up until right. whatever time it does. Right. But so the, the, the sky starts to lighten at 8.30 in the morning and then it goes, the sun's gone by 3.30, quarter to four. Yeah. So a lot of the day was dark. So a lot of the driving was in the dark, especially when we were moving between um, locations to, to stay. 
And then when the snow's coming at you oh. on those little windy roads that are up and down. And skinny. You know, skinny little skinny. roads. And then you'd wake up in the morning and realize as you go back down the road that there was a lock just down the <laughs> bottom of the thing. So if I actually made a, you know, if one of those Highland cows jumped out, you'd yeah. have, it would be like, well, we're swimming in the lock, which was quite chilly. No, it was, um, I think we talked about that. It was, I had to sometimes look away <laughs> Look away, look away from the road. And that's why I was, I said to you, I, I could not have driven the way you were able to drive because number one, my stigmatism in my eye makes driving at night really hard. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like when the snow was coming at us, it created like that weird sort of, mm. not an illusion, but like this very hypnotic effect of like high beams on because it was oh, yeah. so pitch black, no street lights. I actually turned the high beams road. off. Yeah, the high just beams made down, it actually just to keep my eyes down. Yeah, was, more was, challenging. The snow coming at you. We, we, it was. It was. It was a kaleidoscope. It was yes. A bit, bit mesmerizing. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't, stop it. Just watch the road. No, you, know? you did so well. Yeah, you did well, so you. so well. Though it was. I mean, people have said, "How was it?" And I said, "I really don't have enough expeltives." <laughs> expeltives. <laughs> Expletives. <laughs> <laughs> Explosions. Uh, to. To, honestly, I don't have the words to yeah. say how f- amazing it was, yeah. how stunning it was, how fun it was, how how every day was surprising, every day was different. You know, from for a year in the waiting, it mm. was just such a massive build up mm. to get there. And yeah, look, when I I think it's the Scorpio in me that I am a researcher, mm. so I researched the the heck out of Scotland, and and I I think I know the geography of Scotland <laughs> really well now and yeah. which way to go and 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 but I'm I know it much better now from having been there and as we said we didn't consider so much the daylight hours I mean yeah. we knew it was going to be like that but um but all of us had enough clothing and as as we'd heard many times there's no such thing as bad weather it's just it's just in Scotland it's just not having the right clothes and we all had the right clothes right. the footwear. right the right footwear yeah. exactly you yeah. need your proper hiking shoes if you go to Scotland. Yeah. Don't think you can get away with just your regular Some runners. people did, though. Remember we were, so, you know, we were on the Isle of Skye, which which I can say is truly one of the most remarkable places that I've ever seen. Yeah. But there were tourists up there with um, with sneakers on uh, and going, oh, I'm going, how are you doing this? It's bloody freezing. And then wet underfoot. Yes. Like it's very damp, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. No, we all had the right footwear. We all had the right jackets, mm. coats, gloves, mm. and um, none of us froze. None of us complained. I mean, yeah, we were like, holy crap, it's cold. But it was so, it was something about being there in winter. Mm. And I was worried about that. I thought, oh, what have I done? You know, we should have gone in summer where it was green and we could be walking around in, in T-shirts and shorts. But it really do you added, it really added this special layer of, of magic being there in the winter, adding, yeah. adding the snowfalls, adding the lack of people. Um, you know, like we said, we, we felt like we had it to ourselves in mm. a lot of places, a lot of times and places. And I, I would recommend going in winter if you, if you don't mind the cold, if you don't mind layering up. So people have asked me, um, just in, not so much on Instagram or, or through the socials, but I've had people in my life that I've been dealing with in a lot of the last three days saying, we followed you on Instagram, your trip to Scotland, it looked amazing. We want to we want to do that now too. Yeah. You know, like one particular bloke said, we normally go and we go to Thailand and we camp at a resort for, for 10 days. We want to go and do what you did. Yeah. What would you, how did you do it? How did you organize it? What was the thought process behind your yeah, well, travel? Yeah, I, I literally planning? pulled out a map. Like I bought a map of Scotland. I bought, a, I bought a, a, a tour book of Scotland and it had a big map in it. And I knew there was two places that I knew we had to go to. And that was Isle of Skye and the St. Andrews Golf Course. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> and Thank you. and I knew that we wanted to go to Edinburgh. So it was all about mapping that out in a way with the time that we had and figuring out how could we do it where we weren't super rushed. Mm. And then I figured out like how far it was to drive to places. And we never really drove 
um, every place was no longer than two and a half hours away from e- each place. Um, sometimes it was less, but mm-hmm. it was it was the maximum was two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. So I knew getting, the, I'd heard the train from London to Edinburgh was a really beautiful journey as it was. I highly recommend that. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Um, and if you go online and you research the cheaper tickets, um, I had like a an alarm, an email alarm set up for when the tickets go on sale cheap wise. So I was able to get really cheap tickets uh, to get us to Edinburgh. And then I do recommend getting in a car. I think it's a country that you should see by car and picked up a car from uh, from right near Edinburgh Airport mm. and or train station rather. And I, we started making our way north west because the west coast and into the highlands the west coast they say is the most beautiful part of scotland um the east coast has got other other beauties to it as well Mm. but that's also where isle of Skye is so we started making our way west and i knew i wanted to go to loch ness everyone wanted to go to loch ness and by the time we got to loch ness it was and as part of it was sort of looking at what was available on Airbnb. I mean, I booked, I was booking things like in March, April of, of 2022. So I was booking things pretty early. Um, and when I found the house at Loch Ness, River Mill at Loch Ness, <laughs> um, I knew that that was going to be our five day stay. So we could have that time there. And in, and Loch Ness, we're never going to be able to say the name correctly, are we? Drum. Oh, drum no, it's just, no, if you just say to any Scotsman, just go, we stayed in drum, they'll know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's not we the full drum name. We were drum <laughs> <laughs> It's about, it's about 20 minutes, half an hour out of Inverness yep. on, the, on, uh, very close to, to, um, almost on the shores of Loch Ness. Mm. And it's a great place to sort of go visiting out from that as well. You can go further north, you can go into the Cairngorms, um, mountain ranges, down um, south to Glencoe. Down south to Glencoe, which is a, a must. There was a surprise for you down there, wasn't there? There was a surprise. Well, on what day was it? <laughs> a couple of days before we left mm. for Scotland, my husband presents me with this envelope, this large envelope. And I'm like, huh, what's this? And then he comes also out with a <laughs> tartan blanket to throw around my shoulders. And I'm thinking, what? is this man doing? And the lightsaber. <laughs> and no, you couldn't find it, remember? You couldn't find the lightsaber. You said, I was no, I was going to get the lightsaber, but I forgot. <laughs> and night to you. Um, so when I opened it, it opened, it said Highland titles. Mm. And in further investigation after I, after I looked over to open the, uh, the envelope, um, to my absolute delight and shock and surprise, there was my one square foot of land that I officially now own in Scotland, mm-hmm. in Glencoe. Yep. And if you own land in Scotland, you are allowed to be called a lady or a laird. Or a lord. <laughs> and <laughs> now I am now Ali Daddo of Glencoe, correct? Lady, lady Ali Daddo of Glencoe. There is even a Glencoe tartan. Yes. Um, so we don't have any of that yet. We, it was closed. That's the other thing. If you go to Scotland it, around Christmas time, it, most things are shut. Most things are shut. <laughs> yep. We did, we did figure so you're, that one you're out. you're on your own <laughs> and you've got to go find your own way and, and do things and, you know, maybe <laughs> climb through some wire to get into a castle. Which we, Which did we not, didn't do. We did not do that. No, no. we didn't do that. Um, we just stood on the outside and had a look at it. So you are now Lady Alley of Glencoe. So yes. we went and visited my land, your land. So I just want to acknowledge <laughs> something as well. One of our dream, one of our things for 2022 was to become landowners, <laughs> and so now you are a landowner. I am yes. in Scotland, and you went to Scotland, yes, with our family. Yes, and we had a holiday longer. Than we've ever had ever. since we've known each other. Yes. We prior to going to this holiday, we'd only spent maybe maybe ten days away yeah, somewhere. Max. This yeah. is thirty something years. And we hit our ten day <laughs> limit, didn't we, in Scotland? And we were like, I oh looked my at it. God, I mean, we're still going. We're breaking records every <laughs> we're day now. Breaking records, and you, we, I could feel that too. It was, I, I was could it feel myself going. Ah, oh, is it time to go home? Is it time mm. to go home? No, it was not hard. Mm. It was exciting. Mm. It was. To give ourselves a proper three weeks was really special. 
to do that. And I feel like we got to see so much. I, and again, you know, from Loch Ness, we went all the way around Isle of Skye. Um, I would say give yourself at least two to three days in the Isle oh, of Skye. I'd, I'd say three to four. I it mean, is it was just incredible. gorgeous. Mm. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beyond gorgeous. And then in Venice for New Year's Eve, mm. stayed at a hotel in there and, and went to a couple of pubs and heard some um, traditional Scottish music, which was so on my bucket list of hearing. <laughs> I'm obsessed what, with, with and, folk and, music. And what about the traditional Mexican food for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you do have Mexican food in Scotland. Correct. Well, we good. couldn't get in, into anywhere else, no, though. No. We tried. That's it was the other busy. thing, too. You got to know if you go to the UK, like London was a bit of a disaster for us because everything was booked. Like to go into Harrods for a cup of tea, like a high tea, the guy laughed at us when we went to go into there to have it. He's like, well, have you got a booking? Got a reservation? No. <laughs> yeah. Out. You know, you, there's no chance you're going to get in here. Yeah. So you've got to, you've got to, that's the other thing. Yeah, book in make advance. It, make it bookings. Yeah, your hotel. I mean, yeah, mm. yeah, your dinner bookings and yeah. things like that for sure. From Inverness, then we made our way to the East Coast and that's where we went to um, an area called Aberdeen Shire. Uh, Old Meldrum, it's called actually, um, the town. Not not Molly Meldrum. No. No, Old and Molly Meldrum. And this, the, the East Coast was exciting because this is where I knew I had my castles booked. Right. See, she so. kept this all secret, by the way. <laughs> this was all a surprise This for was us. really, I was so excited for I mean, this. So that's, I knew we were, we were finishing up in a couple of castles. Well, which, one of them was a bridge tower and then the other one was an actual castle. So... And that's the thing. It's all through Airbnb. You're okay. able to do so, it all through now, Air, so, Airbnb. So and when you say bridge tower, that's, you go, okay, I'm, I'm driving in my car and I'm listening. I'm going bridge tower. Oh, yeah. The bridge tower was a bluestone building over the top of a river, like a really a, a big river. It spanned the, the river. And then the accommodation was in that building over the river. So we're walking across these turrets which are covered in snow and ice, like slipping down. And, and there's spikes on either. I mean, this was really kind of medieval, wasn't it? Yeah. It's like, you've got to be careful. No kids here because. No little kids. No yeah. little kids. I mean, it was full on. If you fell over into that river, you, <laughs> you were down quite a ways in cold water. Yeah. And it's snowing and icy and stuff. This place has got to be haunted. It's got to be haunted. <laughs> Did you reckon that one was haunted? Oh, for sure. I know the last it's one totally was definitely creeped me out. haunted. And was, what about the moment? So, oh, yeah, you so, were creeped so out. That's So right. Ali and I are staying, <laughs> our room's on one side of the bridge, and the kid, and, and Lotus, our eldest daughter, and Lockie and River are on the other side of the bridge. Now, there's turrets with, with spiral staircase going down to the doorway of the road that goes the bridge part. Now, they were pitch black. And it's night time and there's been, it's like a full Stephen King set up for a horror going there because a, car, a truckload of like a ute full of people with hoods on went through the bridge, like of, of, of the gatehouse going up to another property. Cause this is the gatehouse to a To mansion, another castle. To a castle. Yeah. To Barra right? Castle. So yeah. it's being used. So, so we're there. Anyway, they've got hoods on and the driver kind of looked a little spooky and Kids are going, that was weird. The driver went past and it's full of people, hooded people. I'm like, oh God, this is, this is not good. So, so Al says to me, can you put a chair against the doorknob of our, of our door? And I'm like, okay, sweet, I'll do that. Well, shit, I better go over there and check on Lotus and the boys. So I go over there and I'm really spooked. And I don't have my phone with me or a torch. So I say to Lotus, can you get, honey, just come with me for a second, grab your Grab your phone so we can get the torch. And honestly, I was too scared to go down those spiral stairs by myself <laughs> because I looked down there and the light only went a certain distance and then it was just a black hole. And so, uh, uh, Lolo, bring the torch, bring the <laughs> torch over. So she's gone, okay, dad. She was so cool, by the way. Mm. So cool about it. Mm -hmm. Flash the light there on the thing, on the door. I've checked that it's locked up. It's all good. And I said, okay, sweetheart, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, dad. So get back, come back to you and like, oh, she just got the chair under the doorknob and everything over where we are. Cut to the next morning. 
How'd you sleep? Oh, to Lotus. How'd you sleep? Well, you kind of freaked me out a bit, Dad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, oh, no. Did I? Yeah, you did. So she felt she felt that I was... Yeah, that I mean, I was fixed. trying to be cool, but no, I was not cool. <laughs> you had your poker face on. That's what totally. happened. Yeah. yeah. The worst poker face in the world. <laughs> uh, but it was, but that's the thing. It was over the top of a, over the top of a river. So, and as you said, for the next night, we went to a real castle. We mm. slept in the castle that is documented as being haunted. Yes. But the kids all went online. They didn't tell me this. Yeah. But there's photographs online of ghosts in the window, which I've seen. I can't see any ghosts in there. But we went from the gatehouse one night to the castle. Yeah. On the final night, which was yeah. awesome. Which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was such an experience. And it, it's a castle that's actually being uh, renovated back to its former glory by this great fellow, this eccentric Scotsman that bought the place in 2014, Something I think like it was. That. Yeah. And he bought it for 80,000 pounds. And it was dilapidated, this castle. It had a tree growing through the middle of it. Yeah. And, yeah. He's and some of just, the floors had fallen down. Yeah, it's really I bad, mean, dry yeah, rot. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah. bit by bit, he's renovating it. And we were staying in the in the, the kitchen wing of it, mm. and um, which is all completely renovated, but renovated to how it originally was, you mm. know, 200 years ago. You've seen or a great job. And it was, and I had read on the reviews that he'd taken other families through for a look at the rest of the castle. So I, I texted him and I said, would we, could you show us the rest of the castle? So we had an hour and a half tour right. of this castle that was, yes, very dilapidated in some places, right. but in other places where he'd, he'd renovated it, it was just incredible. It was such a highlight. Uh, and for the carpenters, the tradies listening I've never seen more like chop saws, drills, sanders, more equipment in so many different rooms. It's like, he must've had like 10, 10 drop saws around yeah. the, the buildings. Like he's working in different rooms. I just couldn't, I couldn't get my head around how, what his system is mm. in, in redoing this. Cause he's only doing it with one or two other blokes. Yeah. And it's taken him like 10 years up to this All point. All of his money's poured All, yeah, into it. Yeah. 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 It Amazing. Was, it was just, it was just, uh, just incredible. So what did you learn from going away to Scotland? What did you learn about? Did you learn anything about yourself or traveling or? I, I, I learned that I think I'm be becoming more patient. In mm. my in my old age, <laughs> in my later years, I know that I, I I went there with an intention to enjoy this this holiday and to actually uh, be present, knowing that I don't know if we're going to get another chance to go away like that as our family. Mm. So I had gratitude, an enormous amount of gratitude, which I reminded myself of every day. Um, when I woke up, I journaled like a fiend. I wrote songs. Um, uh, the clutter in my head seemed to disappear because my focus was really about getting us to a, you know, position A and B to B, you know, and what we were going to eat. And so it just felt like uh, simplicity ruled mm. and it was more about just being open to wherever we were going and, and, um, and the history of the place, mm. you know, the Jacobite history, Ali and I, and the kids, which was great. They wanted to know about the history of Edinburgh. They wanted to know about, like we went and saw the Black Watch Museum, which is the, the, uh, the Scottish soldiers the, the, and, and learned about that sort of stuff. So, so, you know, I feel like I just had a, a major expansion time uh, and, and just loved in getting to know our adult children who they are and shutting up and listening to their banter in the, in the mm. truck was just hilarious. Yeah. They are funny people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and they're really smart too. And so that's what I, I, I got out of it. What about yourself? Well, I learned that you are a fabulous person to travel with. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That as far as holidays, I think there's often you've often, correct me if I'm wrong, often there's been stress around holidays for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and we all get to a place and it becomes stressful yeah. and there's things that 
you want to do and you're, you're trying to get the kids to do stuff or mm. there's stress about what we can afford and we can't do this and we can't do that. And it's always, there's a been, there's been some stress around that. And as, as I was saying to you earlier, just to, just to give you a major pat on the back, traveling with you this time, there was such your, the intention that I could feel from you is about not having, not worrying about anything and just being in the moment and just being, as you said, just being grateful. And it really, it, it really helped me mm. because I was, I was also like, oh God, can we afford to have another dinner out or can we afford this lunch or, mm. and you were just like, yep, here we go. We're going to do this. We're going to buy that. Yep. What does everyone want? And it was just this freedom of like, oh my God, we're <laughs> We can get the extra dessert. Oh, and by the way, I'm having another scotch. <laughs> um, Cheers. Yeah, and it was like, okay, we're just putting it on the credit card and let's deal with it later. Yeah. Um, but it was so beautiful watching you being just taking in the beauty of where we were. And, I mean, the amount of times we, we must have looked at each other and just went, oh, my God. Mm. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Yeah. This is so beautiful. Look at where we are. And you kept saying it. So every time you said it, it was like another moment for me to go, yeah, where are we? Like, look at truly what we've created. Look yeah. at how fortunate we are to be walking this snowy path yeah. in this in this incredible glen or wherever we were. Yeah. So I think that was the biggest lesson is just to, if you're going to go somewhere, just be so present in the moment of, mm. of where you are and so grateful. Um, and it makes everything better. And yeah, just to sort of, I think there's like this, this balance of having a lot of things organized and then being open to whatever yeah. happens. <laughs> whatever comes yeah. what may is what we'll yeah. do also. So, yeah. yep, we're here now. I don't know what we're doing. Let's get in the car and drive and see what we can find. And every time we did that, we found amazing things. Mm. So sort of trusting that was really, yeah. really good. Yeah. I think that that's the Boy Scout motto, you know, be prepared. And yeah. we couldn't have been more prepared. And even when things didn't go the way we thought they were going to go, it was like, oh, well, something else is meant to be happening yeah. right now. And, and that's what I was just trusting in, just going, just something else is going to happen and whatever we need is going to be there for us. Yeah. Because you made the preparation, you, you got us so organized, you know, and, and that is, I think the key to it. It was, you know, not one of those things, oh, I'll just hit it and hope. Yeah. It was, you know, which is another way to do it. Yeah. 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 And I'm you sure know, that's worked for It's another way to too, do it. This but... time we didn't do it. And I think because yeah. the stakes would have been higher given that we were away, it was bloody, it, the, it was cold, Yeah, you know, and we, and we, and we needed that transport and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, just tick the boxes and, and, and then be easy with it. And it, yeah. was, it was phenomenal. And it was, wasn't that a great way to start a year? Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like we feel like we're way ahead because we had such a, an, you know, a, a stress-free time. And, and I feel like that was a choice. Yes. It's on my part to yeah. not be stressed out by yeah. stuff. Even the aeroplane ride home with no, no leg room, <laughs> sitting by the dunnies again in the back of a chumbo and the, the three hours it took for our luggage to come off the plane. Yeah, right. We yeah. got nowhere else to be, you know. Well, exactly. Off that's we right. And it only you know? just sort of ruins the holiday more when you start to stress about things mm. like that. You know, it's mm. just like, okay, all right. This yeah. is just where we're at. This is what's going on. We've got rain, we've got snow, or we've got to wait here and it's all going to be okay. And, and, and I think when you're the, the, the major adults in the room, mm. as, as you and I were, mm. that rubbed off on the rest of the, yeah. the gang as well. Because they were, they were great. They, they were, were great. They were great. And they even tried, you know, blood pudding and haggis. And <laughs> well, <not laughs> we had a crack. We had a crack. It was really good. Yeah. Hey, we're going to have a crack this year with, uh, with the podcast as well. We've got some great guests coming up. We do. We're really looking forward to it. And, um, and so glad that, that you're, you're with us for along for the ride. Yeah. And, and again, as, as we've said before, if, if there's someone that you would like us to talk to as mm. well, you know, send your suggestions in and we'd love to hear from you because we're always looking for interesting people. They don't have to be celebrities as, yeah. as you've, as you yeah. know, we, um, 
we love talking to authors and people who've had amazing experiences. Mm. And so if you know someone, let us know and, and uh, we'll track them down. Yeah, you can do that via Instagram and, uh, and also through Nova Podcasts Official on, uh, on Insta or with our Facebook page, Separate Bathrooms Facebook page which I am paying more attention to. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you can pick up our email as well from the notes, the show notes. Yeah. I hope you had a fabulous Christmas mm. and New Year, whether you stayed at home or made a little journey or made a big journey. But um, we're looking forward to, to sharing more with you this year. So thanks for listening in 2022 and look forward to sharing more with you. Thanks.